Hello. Our devotion for today is entitled, The Way to Unity. And it is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. Unity in the body of Christ. The Apostle Paul wrote, I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, a bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower regions, the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so it builds itself up in love. The way to unity. The Apostle Paul doesn't hesitate to encourage us. As always, he begins by pointing out what we are and what we have. We are called. Therefore, we should live as if we're worthy of the call that we've received. We are one. Therefore, we should all do our best to be united. Paul knows what threatens true unity. We are one, but we're all different, because the grace of God was given to each of us, according to the measure of Christ's gifts, to serve his purpose. In this text, Paul lists out some of them. First are the apostles, who were appointed by Christ himself, then the prophets, those who received the gift of prophecy, and spoke after being inspired by the Holy Spirit. Then the Spirit gave them something to say. Then he mentions the evangelists, those who share their faith openly and boldly with others. Last, he speaks of those who are pastors and teachers. In other words, leaders in the congregation and preachers of the word. We received all of these, so the body of Christ, namely the church, can be instructed and taught, so we can all reach unity in the faith. And that's where we meet the great danger to true unity. From the beginning, we were children in the faith, 
naive in the knowledge of God's Son. So it's not strange that we can be led astray when false teachings emerge. There are plenty of false prophets. Jesus warned us about them. He knows what damage they could do. They are the worst enemy of unity. There's only one way to unity, that we become one in the knowledge of God's Son and grow up as members in Christ and mature in Christ's fullness. Now that can only happen when we're steadfast in the truth and accept the gospel in its entirety, the gospel that is given to us in the scriptures. Then we could grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. Then all of our differences and the different tasks that we do won't divide us, but instead they will strengthen us in cooperation in the body of Christ. And I quote verse 16, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all the different gifts we have received. You've sprinkled your fullness on us all, and you want us to serve you and one another, each with our own gifts. Help us now so we don't hold on to what's ours and expect everyone else to be like us. Give us who serve you, your church, in your church, the gifts that we need to grow. Give us good pastors and teachers who can instruct us with the word that comes from you. Lead us toward true unity in the faith and to the knowledge of you so we could grow in you our head. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. God's blessings. I'll see you next time.